Now I, I you know we're gonna we're gonna shift back. We heard earlier a little bit. Uh, I know that Zero Yao shared a little bit about the Body of Workers project, which is a, a project that I'm super excited about. You know, find a, a being made available today and the work that's that's gone into it. So this next conversation, I'm super happy to be joined by members of Veil Machine and Kink Out, and to kind of really talk about that project and, and how it's how it's developed and where where it is now and where, and what folks can can anticipate. And for folks that don't know. Veil Machine is a collaborative project where Nico Flux, Sybil Fury, and Empress Wu are creating a new form. Excuse me. Veil Machine is a collaborative project where Nico Flux, Sybil Fury, and Empress Wu are creating a new form of digital riot to challenge SESTA, FOSTA, and the Earn It Act. And their project is in collaboration with Kinkout to produce Body of Workers, a private online gallery created by and for sex worker artists as an act of resilience against the gentrification of the internet and a peep show to the art patron. And Kinkout brings intersecting communities together as an ever evolving container. Kinkout is a performance space, screening room, art collaboration, panel discussion, SM club, call to action, tattoo studio, art auction, and fundraiser for communities most affected by the injustice of censorship, criminalization, and demonization of our lives and our livelihoods. So I'd like to, to welcome Yin and Mar to, to really kind of expand more, more on, on what Z has already offered us as far as like what is, you know, what is body of workers and what, and what can folks hope to, to, hope to expect from it and what is the, 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 the disruption that it intends to, to cause and kind of like, and what, what have you, what has the space created? The, their work is so dynamic and, and evolving that I'm, I'm really appreciative that they have offered to kind of like really it's going to op open the space up and kind of speak introduce themselves to you. So if, if, if you if you both would join and kind of like let folks know a little bit about your background and what brought you into doing this work, I'd really appreciate it. Yen, do you want to go first? <laughs> Sure. Hi, I'm Yin Q. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I am a tan-skinned tan um, East Asian um, non-binary with short hair. I'm wearing um, I'm wearing a leather vest, <laughs> and I've got some orchids behind me from uh, from the Lunar New Year. So. Um, and I am one of the co-founders of Kink Out, um, and part of the Body of Workers team. Mar? Well, hi, um, my name is Mar. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm a light-skinned, black, non-binary femme. Um, I have long uh, black box braids and I'm wearing a white and black shirt with black fringe. Um, and I'm seated in my living room um, on unceded Dona Odom land in so-called Southern Arizona. Um, I am a migrant justice organizer and sex worker, uh, liberation organizer, Leather Dyke, um, and I have uh, been leading the visual design for Body of Workers. Thank you both. Yen, would you start us off by maybe speaking a little bit about what Body of Workers is and why you felt it was, an, it was important for Body of Workers to exist? Sure. So I think the like first and foremost, Body of Workers is a private art, online art gallery. You know, it's a, it's a space for um, artists, sex working artists, and people in the sex industry who um, to be able to easily access um, and freely access a space where they can upload their artwork, their stories. Um, we're hoping to be able to have host videos in the future, um, as well as, you know, uh, any, any kind of resources that people want to share, um, being able to sh share it like together in a, in a community space that can be private and is veiled. And yet at the same time, um, through the privacy settings, uh, people can also kind of give uh, curators or patrons or general public um, sort of an educational peep show <laughs> into into what we're doing in our lives and our art. And is ha, was that was that the initial idea that really started off or, or how, how has it evolved um, through the initial inspiration to what's being presented today? Sure. Uh, you know, so with Kink Out events, we've been um, hosting kind of art and activism in actual brick and mortar spaces. And then about two years ago, as Sesta Fosto, 
I think it was even before that, three years ago, when Estesta Fosta was really annihilating our our um, the sex workers communities. Um, ability to thrive or to be able to survive even, um, and also taking down resources, taking down um, spaces where people were sharing about clients or dangerous clients or safe, safety measures, or even just the community care that we need so much to, to, have, um, to have mental wellness for each other. Um, those spaces were being taken away. And at the time I was actually in a residency at MoMA PS1 with um, other people kink out and you know we we're and we called our event spaces and we were really thinking about like okay brick and mortar spaces how the policing um, and gentrification of spaces like Times Square really brought so much violence um, to uh, not only sex working communities but low income um, people the most marginalized people who are who are trying to survive by thrusting them to then like the outer margins where there's no pu public access of transportation not as well you know not as well lit um, the communities couldn't gather in a way to like kind of look out for each other. Um, and so like that disbursement um, it was, was a type of shadow banning of, the, of actual geographic spaces. And as I was seeing like all of my friends unable to um, make a living on, you know, constantly their, their Instagram um, feeds were constantly being pulled down. I started thinking about too, about like, um, what are the art spaces that we're creating? Because one of the things that we were doing with Kink Out is like really thinking of like, going into museum spaces and kind of taking it back in a, in a way of showing like our agency within like the leather queer um, sex working cultures that have always, always influenced um, art, right? Where there's museums filled with, with artists who have painted um, sex workers and, and queer people and, and leather culture or taken photos of them. Um, and yet for our own stories to be actually um, heard and out there and authentically voiced was um, was is very unusual for, for that breakthrough to happen. So taking a look at like how we can we have to also be doing the same things in virtual spaces of um, creating and uplifting the agencies of of the people who are actually having these lived experiences. That, yeah, that's absolutely critical. And I, I think a lot about you know like the way that like safe lists and the opportunity to to do to practice your trade in in safe ways and ways that that are the most um, empowering to, to folks with, within uh, the community within the profession and how you know laws like SESTA, FOSTA and the, the threat of the Earn It Act have really challenged that that ability and, and, and made folks literally less safe without without providing a lot of the the, the benefits that they were ostensibly purported to give. Mar, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that maybe, would you be willing to like kind of tell us a little bit about, like, for folks that are, that are listening that might not be aware about what Section 230 is and what it's meant from, from your perspective to the sex worker community and maybe why they're so concerning? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Section 230 came about um, in the late 90s, I think it was like 96. Um, and it essentially gave uh, immunity legally to, um, companies uh, for third party content. So if you're like soliciting on Craigslist or Backpage, um, Backpage or Craigslist wouldn't be um, liable for anything um, that's being posted on there. Um, and yeah, so essentially um, when SESTA FOSTA came in, it was like uh, companies were liable now um and so people didn't want to get in trouble so they started taking everything down you know people's posts are getting flagged a bunch of websites got taken down um and it just made the internet like um less of a safe place for sex workers um to advertise it also made a lot of people resort to um street-based uh working um, all under the, the guise of um, stopping sex trafficking online. Yeah, and what I think what a lot of folks who, who have who've supported SESTA and FOSTA don't realize is that there were always, you know, if you were committing a, a, a federal crime, there were always 
ways that that folks could be held accountable for the harms that they were causing. But the into the idea that Section 230 created this intermediary liability or, or protection from intermediary liability actually lifted up the opportunity for folks who are, who have been the least empowered in our communities to actually raise their voices without concerns of being over -sense, over censored and having their their the, the platforms, the few platforms that they do have to be able to make themselves heard and to build community taken away from them under this, you know, supposed guise of, of protection that hasn't been um, hasn't been realized. Yin, are there other ways that, that are that is there anything you'd like to add around like ways that you've seen folks within the, the sex worker community impacted by by SESTA FOSTA? Um, sure. Um, I just want to add to that, as you said before, like they're, they're going after these these tools and like they were actually really going after also um, the ones that uh, were most accessible and free to to workers to connect with clients safely. Right. Like Craigslist, Vic Backpage, Rent Boy. And they were, you know, they were going after um, spaces where um, it was really, yeah, as I said before, it was just like more, made it more accessible and made it like easier for people to screen clients and like taking that away from people then, as Mars had mentioned, forced people to, to um, have to resort to riskier and riskier business um, practices to, to stay afloat. Um, I also want to say that like the impact of online erasure and cultural is a, like a cultural violence against a community um, and that the anti-trafficking rhetoric and policing tactics disproportionately affect migrants, um, the low income, poverty, um, you know, um, income sp spaces, trans women and, and women of color, um, and also these anti privacy policies um, and really the efforts to control communities online will over time have an impact that stretches far beyond the sex working, um, sex working people. Uh, it's going to like affect how LGBT youth find, find um, um, community care if, and also reproductive health, like how to, how to find like even sex education. I think Juno and Z had spoken before during their conversations how sex workers uh, not only are doing a trade in business, but then also we create content online that educates people. You know, we, we can take, um, create content online that is very much about consent forward because we have to constantly be gaining that negotiation and consent through a lot of our work. So that we've been teaching that for, for like <laughs> an era before, before consent became, you know, sort of a, a understood and well recognized need. Mark, can you tell us uh, to body of workers? What what is body of workers? What is the 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 plan for disrupting this violence? The, as are are this this increased likelihood of violence that's being imposed on folks within the sex worker community? Yeah. So body of workers um, essentially subverts like what we think of as like art versus what we think of as content. Um, historically the art world has been dominated by men, especially cis white men. Um, you think about like artists like Andre Serrano, who like made this piece of a crucifix and like a jar of his piss and like, uh, you know, a dominatrix posts, you know, uh, themselves pissing on like a Bible or something. And that's like considered terrible. Um, yet that photo sold for like $270,000. Um, and so body of workers, uh, kind of like inserts itself to like blur the lines between like what we do consider art versus what we do consider content or porn or, um, and all that, because ultimately it's like, who, who are we to decide who is an artist and who are, you know, a, other groups of people to decide who is an artist. Um, and it creates a, not a safe space because there's no safe spaces, but a safer space um, for uh, sex workers to exhibit their pieces and to eventually sell their pieces. Um, and because of all of the things going on with um, the Earn It Act and SESTA-FOSTA, um, the idea is that it will slip under the, the radar of that because it's not um, what would be considered illegal. And for, for both of you, what are, what are some of the aspects of body of workers that you're most excited about? Um, Mar, do you want to answer that first? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I'm excited about the potential to build 
more of a, a community amidst all of this shit that we're going through on the internet and with COVID and all of that. And it's like uh, so many spaces for sex workers just don't exist anymore. And I don't get to see the same things that I, I could see before when we could all gather together. Um, and yeah, to see what people are working on and like what what makes everyone tick amidst all of this. Absolutely. Yeah, I am. I'm really excited about the artwork, <laughs> you know, and the sexy <laughs> bodies that uh, that will fill that artwork. Um, and again, about like the agency of stories that we're bringing. We're going to be like seeing artwork and hearing stories and reading stories and. Um, seeing videos from sex workers, you know, not not somebody who's writing about a sex worker, not somebody who's like taking uh, a sex worker story and then making billions of dollars off of it by by bringing it to Netflix or bringing it to uh, like where all these other producers are basically poaching our stories, taking them in and then and then making so much money off of them because they have that access, you know, they have they're able to get through the gates of like what gets on to. Um, a Hollywood movie and what and or 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 these other um, forms of, of media. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be able to see like the phenomenal communities that are out there. Also, because sex worker organizing is so fraught with trauma um, because of where we're coming from of being a criminalized people. Um, coming together can often be be really hard. You know, it can be it can be beautiful too. And this is like where I want to be able to create a space of celebrating the sex workers' um, resistance and community um, because we are constantly mourning the loss of yet another sex worker. We're constantly um, trying to get bail money. You know, like each of us are like putting twenty dollars or twenty dollars into a GoFundMe to get to get bail money for, for a sex worker or to to make sure that they have housing once they come out of um, prisons for during COVID. Um, so like this is this is finally a time where we can actually have a place of celebration as well. I. I... My, my only my only regret with this conversation is that I have like a billion more questions that I'd love to ask you both both about but about your work as individuals about veil machine about kink out about body of workers about how we stop the, the earn it act and sesta fosta um, so so I, I can, can you share with folks a little bit about where they can go if they want to continue this conversation if they want to find out more about veil machine if they want to find out more about kink out if they want to and and and, and, we're, and we're gonna hopefully we're gonna folks are gonna find out more about body of workers what wh where should folks go to find out more information on the stuff that, that you're working on and also how to stop sesta and fosta sure both veil machine and kink out have links both on, on instagram as well as websites which i believe you'll be able to find on on this iBeam hub somewhere. <laughs> um, and then I, I'll put it into chat later. Um, I will say that, well, your organization, EFF, is doing incredible work in terms of stopping SESTA FOSTA as well as the Earn It Bill. I feel like you, you have like a lot of um, resources online that can tell you people where to go in terms of calling the senators, putting up social media, um, and the same as Hacking Hustling, um, which I know you all work with too. Hacking Hustling is an amazing um, organization working for, like, for the intersections of sex work and technology. And yeah, I feel like they, I know that on their about page, they have an, uh, a link to, to get to those senators too, to be able to call um, of who we're, who we're supposed to be knocking on those doors and making sure this doesn't happen. Mar, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think that Yin just covered. Awesome. All of that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I am so appreciative. I'm so appreciative of, the, of, of both of you, of, of this project, of this work. I'm appreciative of, of iBeam for asking me to, to host today uh, and for all of the speakers and everyone that we, that we heard from today. Um, this